Hi everyone, we're gonna get started in just a minute. Thanks so much for coming to the Watercolor Mother's Day card craft. I just want to let you know that you can send in questions through the uh, chat and we're going to be moderating those um, as we do the demo um, and at the end I'm going to answer all of your questions as well. Uh, my name is Kat, I work at the Hamilton Public Library and if you again if you have any questions you can leave those with your name or you can answer them um, anonymously as well. Um, by default all your questions are private and then if we see questions that we think other people will also want to know the answer to um, of course, we will, um, you know, publish those and let you know uh, what answers we have. I just want to let you know that today's session is being recorded um, and it will be uploaded at a later time um, so that you can come back and watch the videos again and make your, uh, your cards and all that. So I hope you have a nice hot drink. You can relax and watch um, some watercolor uh, card videos today. I'm going to wait just a couple minutes to start the demo. I actually uh, made some cards earlier this week and then I recorded it and made it into a nice little video package so that um, you wouldn't have to wait for the watercolor to dry and kind of all that stuff to happen. So, um, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to um, play the video. You'll see three different cards and then I'll come back and answer any questions you have or comments. Um, you know, I have my watercolors here. Maybe we can do um, a card or something together. Um, you know, we'll see how we feel. The video is only about 15 minutes long and then we'll do another, you know, time for questions, however long it takes. What are we at for time? Oh, we're a couple minutes past. So, you know what, I think I will just start the video then. And uh, again, feel free to leave all your questions um, in the Q&A and I'll moderate that and answer any questions you have. Um, it'll go pretty fast, but as I say, we'll, we are recording this so we can post it uh, later for you. The Hamilton Public Library here to show you how to make these super cute and easy Mother's Day cards. First, you'll need some watercolor paper or any thick paper will do, like a cardstock is great. You're going to cut this watercolor or cardstock down to four inches by five and a quarter. This will be our little canvas that we're going to use. You'll also need another piece of cardstock in order to make your actual card the part that will fold that you'll write the message in. So I'm just using some plain white cardstock today and you'll cut this in half to eight and a half by five and a half and then fold it. You'll need some watercolors. Any watercolor is fine. This is just an old set that I happen to have. If you don't have watercolor, you can make your own. Try using baking soda and food coloring. You'll need some paintbrushes and again any kind is fine for this. And you'll also need some water and paper towel. This will help you to wash off your brush and just tap away any excess water. And let's get started. So I recommend covering your uh, dining room table or whatever you're working on with cardboard as well. I'm going to add some water to this canvas to our little watercolor paper here and then pick up some color. So for this card, I'm going to use um, pink and I'm just going to dab it on my paper in kind of a random fashion. What will happen is the actual water will help the paint spread. So you'll notice there that it's kind of moving in whatever direction it chooses. And by adding more paint, you'll see more spreading. And it's going to make this really beautiful organic shape just by dabbing paint in a kind of random formation. Now I'm going to use pink and orange today, but you can use whatever colors you like. My mom just happens to love pink, so that was definitely on my list of things to create today. I can see this being really pretty with maybe a um, blue-green combination or maybe a couple different shades of the same color as well. I'm going to add my orange at the top here and again kind of doing a little bit of a random dabbing. You don't need to be a great artist, I'm certainly not, in order to make a beautiful kind of messy shape. We're going for something that is imperfect, kind of has some strange, you know, borders and lines throughout it. And it's going to blend really nicely with that pink. So we're just going to go back and keep blending it in. And watercolor is really forgiving. You can really kind of blend however you choose and it will just blend into each other. I'm going to try doing a little bit of speckles on this as well. So to get some nice speckled effect, you just get some paint and tap it on your finger 
and the paint will just delicately drop off like that. I think this adds a really pretty delicate effect to it. Now I'm noticing that I have a little bit of extra water on my page, so I'm just going to use some paper towel and just lightly dab, and what that'll do is it'll soak up any extra water that you may have on your page. There we go, that looks really nice. So once this is dry, I'm going to show you some other backgrounds I also worked on with the same technique in different colors. So there's our dried background. It turned out uh, quite pretty. You can see areas of concentrated colors and areas of diluted color, which is nice. I also did orange and yellow. Nice sunshine effect. And some blue and green. Now my spatters didn't turn out as pretty on this one, but I still like the effect. Here's another orange and pink one as well. So now that that's dried, I'm going to add a cute design onto my card. I'm going to go really simple. I'm not a great artist, so I thought I'd try to add some little hearts. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm sure by now your mom knows that you're not perfect. And so I think this little handmade card is a really nice touch and that she'll really enjoy it. So I'm just adding some little hearts here. You could maybe add um, some stickers or maybe a stamp that you have at home. Anything to make it just give a little bit of detail. And there's our first card already done. That wasn't too hard. For our next card, we're going to use some craft tape. If you don't have this, you can use masking tape or painter's tape. It doesn't matter what it looks like because we're actually just going to use it to do a masking technique. So what I mean by that is I'm going to tape off certain areas of the card so that when we paint, there'll be no paint on those areas. So I'm doing the borders of the card with my tape and then also some areas in the middle. If you have um, like a thicker painter's tape, you might want to trim it down just for um, like a smaller area of masking. Even this tape I thought was maybe a little bit thick for what I wanted, but it worked out okay in the end. The reason why we want to use like a, uh, like a washi tape, a craft tape, or a masking tape is so that when we pull up our tape at the end, when everything is dry, um, it won't take away the paper with it, and you'll have a really nice clean line. So I, for this one, I'm going to just do a line in the middle there, and I'm going to divide this into three sections. You can definitely get fancier with this and do, you know, maybe diagonals or a heart design or something else. Um, really, your imagination is the limit here. So now that I've got it all masked off properly, I'm going to get my uh, brush wet and just add some color. As you saw in the preview, I'm going to use similar color scheme for this. I'm going to do pink to an orange ombre or, um, you know, gradient effect. I'm not using the best brushes, so the hair is kind of coming off there, um, but I will grab it at the end, don't worry. So with watercolor, if you want something to be a little bit more vibrant, just keep adding color into it, um, and that'll brighten it up a little bit for you. With this technique, uh, with masking, you want to make sure you get into all those color, all those corners, sorry, so that when you do pull off the tape, it'll actually um, have a nice strong line. So I'm going to add a bit more orange here to the middle piece to make a nice blend of pink and orange. I can think of a lot of other color combinations you might want to use for this. So you could do like a light blue to a darker blue or maybe a blue to a turquoise. Um, you could also do like monochromatic, like a, a you know shades of gray or something like that um, as well. And then for the bottom, I'm going to oh, need a bit more water. I'm going to do just orange at the bottom. Um, and I'm kind of noticing that the middle part could be a little bit more pink added to it. So no big deal. I'm just going to go back in and mix some more pink right on the paper. Um, if you wanted to be a little bit more like, you know, perfect about things, you could also mix these colors on a separate um, like palette or maybe a separate piece of paper just to make sure that it's going to be turning out the way you want it to be. I like to wing it and just see what happens. So <laughs> I 
Now that the hardest part is where we have to wait for it to dry. Um, so it's now dried, so I'm going to peel off the tape and see how it turned out. Even though it's hard, you want to make sure that the entire card is dry before you peel off the tape, um, just to make sure you get some really straight lines. So here we go, and that looks good. Do the next one. As you're peeling it off, make sure you're peeling up and away from your from your paper um, so that you don't get any of the paint on your um, tape. And there we go. If you don't have watercolor paint, you could also do this technique with, you know, crayons or pencil crayons. I think this is really fun to do with kids. It seems a little bit magical uh, when you pull off the tape and there's nothing underneath. All right, so we're almost done here. And it's looking quite good, I think. There we go. And now that it's all dried, I'm going to write my sentiment or what I want to say on the card. And that will be next. So for this card, I decided that I wanted to write I love you on it. Um, you could obviously write whatever you want, especially in these times. It might be nice to say, I miss you, or I'm going a little bit crazy, please text me, you know, whatever you're feeling at the time. I'm going to practice and do a couple different versions of this, just to make sure that it will fit properly onto my um, card. For this card, I want it to be right aligned, so I just want it at that edge. So I'm just going to place it up there as kind of a guide for me, um, and here we go. For cards like this, it doesn't matter if your handwriting is not the best because it's yours and that's what makes every card you know, special and unique. Um, and I like that about these cards. So there's cards two and now it's on to card three. So for this card, you'll want some pretty paper. Um, I'm using this envelope that I got with a purchase, um, but you could use any sort of wrapping paper, um, maybe, you know, a magazine ad or something like that. You're going to trim it down to four inches by five and a quarter. And then just take a scrap of cardstock or watercolor paper and get some water on there. For this one, I'm going to try to match the pink flowers on my actual card. So I'm going to use a little bit of pinks and oranges and reds to try and get that kind of rosy color on there. I'm going to mix it right on the paper. Um, and to see how it goes and how it changes. Again, if you uh, prefer, you can mix this separately on a different sheet of paper and, you know, try out a bunch of different color combinations until you get kind of what you want. The more color you add, the more vibrant it will be. Um, so in this case, it's looking a little bit too light. So I'm going to go back for some more color and just kind of boost it up a little bit and get it a little bit more vibrant. I'm sorry, you can't really see what color I'm getting here, but I'm getting a, uh, a red color, reddish orange to kind of add, which brings in those kind of deeper rose colors, which I'm what I'm going for here. And just blend it all in. This card is a great excuse to use some of those, you know, nice paper that you're saving or maybe like a really nice greeting card that you had from a friend that you want to reuse. And that turned out nice, nice kind of rose color. So now we're going to try writing out our message, which is going to be Happy Mother's Day. And again, I'm just going to practice here and writing it out to make sure that I get it correctly and just take a look at what kind of what kind of writing I want to do. Uh, for this one, I'm going to try to get it in the center of this card. And again, I'm going to use my practice one as a guide to kind of make sure that it ends up center-ish. And I'm sure as you see this, you can think of a lot of different things that you can write on a card for maybe someone who's uh, far away from you right now. 
All right, so here we go with this. And I'm just using a red kind of felt pen uh, to write this on. And you know what, that ended up a little bit too far to the right. So I'm just going to redo it and see if I can get it a little bit more centered. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. Sometimes in crafting, we make mistakes. And I kind of like that because then it gives us another opportunity to learn. So I'm gonna add my pink. I'm gonna add my red. getting these little hairs from my uh, brush on my paper it's not the these brushes aren't the greatest but that's okay you don't need top of the line stuff for stuff like this I'm gonna add some orange and if you like experimenting with watercolor definitely check out our um, ebook catalog there's a lot of great painting books in there that you can kind of flip through while we're at home and we have lots of great physical books in our collection as well that you can access once we're back in our branches. So here we go again. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, excuse my head there, it's getting in the way. There we go, not too bad. At least better than the first attempt. I'm gonna go with that. Excuse the shaking of my table, my, uh, my cat just jumped up there for a second. Now we're gonna adhere this onto the um, card. We can use a little tape glider or glue or white glue. Um, I have a big tape glider that I like to use because I do a lot of paper crafting. This Scotch Advanced Tape, tape Glider. Um, definitely not mandatory, it is a super extra type of thing that you don't need. There we go, so I'm just gonna add that on the card. About two thirds of the way down, kind of rules of design dictate that you kind of want things at those intersections of, you know, thirds. So if you can, um, it turns out nicely if you put things around there. So I'm going to adhere this onto this card base. And for this, you don't have to get really like neat and tidy with your taping. Oh, did I get that paint on that? Nope. You can just kind of tape however you want. Um, if you're using uh, glue, you might just want to be leery of the edges so that like, the white glue doesn't seep out. And there we are. So now we just have to do the same things with our other two card bases. So we're just going to glue those on as well. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to let you know that we're hoping to do a lot of other online um, craft programs as well. So check back at hpl.ca for upcoming listings. And the other great thing we have on our website is RB Digital, which is a ver uh, digital magazine um, collection. And through that, you can get all sorts of card making, scrapbooking, um, crafting, like crochet, quilting, knitting, anything you th can think of um, types of magazines. And those are just really fun to uh, flip through to get ideas, get some inspiration. Um, and the nice thing with the magazines is there's no limit. You can download as many as you want um, and you can flip through those. So I really like doing that in my spare time. And you might be feeling the same way that you kind of want a little bit of crafting inspiration if you're feeling a little low. So there's our last card. I'm just going to tear that onto the front. And sometimes I like to actually put a little um, signature at the back too to, to kind of signal that I made them, which is cute. So there's our three cards. Thanks so much for uh, joining me today for this little mini card class. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. Question uh, was, how do we find this later? Good question because I went through it really fast. Um, so it will be published to the Hamilton Public Library YouTube channel um, probably next week. I just have to uh, send over the video to them. Um, and you can find that on our website. Um, 
and that'll have all the details for that. And we've recorded this session as well, so I think we'll probably edit out the uh, audio and visual technical difficulties, but we can uh, we can add uh, the uh, video of actual the Q&A and things like that. Um, if you have any questions about how to access um, RB Digital or any of the ebooks that I mentioned, I want to let you know as well that we have a lot of staff members that have been answering questions. They'll give you a call. They will walk you through how to access uh, like any online resources that you want. Um, so it's great. We're all um, you know working hard from home. Um, it's been an adjustment, but it's been really great reaching out to customers and helping them connect with our resources, which is awesome. Um, you could also comment if you guys have been trying any other new crafty hobbies. Let me know. And I also want to know um, what other types of videos you want to see, um, what things you're kind of interested in learning. I know that um, one of uh, Hamilton Public Library's uh, favorite programmers, uh, Linda, is going to be doing uh, some sort of book craft um, later on. She's working on that right now. Oh, that's a good question. If you can get a watercolor effect with diluted acrylics. Yeah, I think you can if you just add enough water. That would be, that's a good question. I haven't tried it, but I, yeah, if you have enough water on your canvas, it should work out okay. Um, I kind of mentioned really quickly that, um, oh, I mentioned really quickly about making your own watercolors with um, baking soda and food coloring. Um, I meant to to have that link ready in advance, but you can do a quick Google search to find that. Um, it's really neat. You actually just use like an ice cube tray and then pop in the baking soda, food coloring and water. Um, it hardens up and then you just add water to that when you're ready to start painting. Um, so I'm excited to try that later. I do have like I do have a little watercolor set, but some of those, you know, food coloring dyes you can get a really uh, like neon and stuff like that. So that that'd be cool. I'm going to say to this person, give it a try and find out. The other thing I think would be cool with acrylics is you can do the masking technique and it would be a lot more um, like vibrant and interesting um, for sure. For the like mushy kind of backgroundy type stuff, um, you can try that um, with acrylics as well. The other thing I have done, which I've had some um, luck with, is using ink pads. So what you do with the ink pad is you actually um, rub it on like a, um, like a, what am I trying to say? Like an acrylic surface. So like something that you use to um, stamp acrylic stamps on. If you rub the ink pad on that, um, give it a spray with a water, um, you know, water gun and then stamp it onto your page. And that gives a really kind of cool effect as well. Um, so if you don't, if you have, if you have ink pads at home, you can uh, probably stamp those on your paper and use that to move the color around also. So yes, thanks for um, sticking by through all of our technical difficulties. Um, it sounds like we uh, know what to do next time, which is the main thing. And I just want to give a shout out to Alex, who is the, uh, the man's voice you heard um, earlier. He was on the line helping us out and making sure that um, you know, everything worked as well as it could. Uh, and thanks to Carly as well, who's been moderating some of your uh, comments. She's uh, on the health and well-being team with me um, and she's been great through this as well. All right, I'm gonna hang out for a couple more minutes. Um, if you don't have any other uh, questions, thanks so much for coming. And uh, we hope to uh, see you again at a future Hamilton Public Library uh, program. I hope you learned something new and uh, happy Mother's Day to the moms out there and happy weekend to everyone else. <laughs>